60 hours. That's how long it took me to go from level 1 to the max level 2450 with no Robux purchases besides a race free roll. No double XP purchases, no double mastery, no private servers, none of that. No. I still have a lot to do as well. I'm nowhere near being done with everything, so that brings the question. Is it worth playing this game and putting in that many hours into it? You might find the answer to that by watching this video. So. This is an RPG game. Most of them include some sort of leveling system with different ways to achieve said levels. It's a pretty important part of RPG games, so how is it in this game? Garbage. Leveling is a major thing that this game needs to improve on, I believe. It's so painfully long and tedious that it's probably a pretty big reason there are so many players in this game. It forces you to spend hours upon hours doing the same thing over and over again, waiting for your level to get higher so you would eventually have access to more content. It's almost a slap in the face having the game make you go to the quest giver and pick up the same exact quest in order to grind levels, only to move on to the next island and do the same exact thing, but with different scenery and different enemies. Talk to the quest giver, kill eight of these goons, go back to the quest giver, repeat. To give the game some credit, there are some things you are able to do once you get to higher levels. However, they all either involve some sort of RNG, which means lots of waiting, or just makes you go back to the same grinding you were already doing. For an example, here is this weapon, by Sento. It costs quite a bit of money and has some cool abilities, but you have to do the same grinding you were already doing in order to get the mastery you need to use its abilities. You can also upgrade it, but it comes from a boss that spawns every 4-6 to six hours. Whatever you are trying to achieve in this game, it requires a lot of grinding and or a lot of waiting in order to achieve it. That's fine, it's what most RPGs do to a certain extent. It's just that this game doesn't really try to do anything to change up the grinding to make it somewhat interesting still, so it gets painful to reach your goals sometimes. Keeping all of that in mind, I'm going to go through everything in each of the three C's to give you an idea of how much there is to do, starting with the first C. So yes, there will be a lot of spoilers in this video. So, if you would rather spend the 60 plus hours to see everything I'm about to talk about yourself, then go ahead and close out this video. Have at it. However, I guarantee that you will find plenty of stuff I haven't talked about as this game does have a lot of content in it. So, let's start with that. You start the game with a random race. A good chunk of you will probably not realize that starting off as human is the most common race and it does not alter your appearance at all. But there are in fact four races you start off as. Human, Fish, Mink, and Sky. All of these races have different different buffs that can be upgraded as you progress the game. You are greeted with no tutorial as this game expects you to figure out everything yourself pretty much, but if you are not into that sort of thing, then there is a wiki that explains basically everything about the game in detail. Majority of the questions you have will be answered by the wiki, but I'm going to explain some things so this video makes more sense to everyone moving forward. In your menu, you have your stats. You can invest points you get from leveling up into any stat you want. You get 3 points per level, and so you can max out 3 stats total. Melee and defense are the most important stats as they give you more energy and health respectively, so most people recommend that you max out those two in one other stat of your choosing. Of course, at the end of the day, it's your choice of how you invest your stats, and there are even codes that you can enter in this little button that can completely reset your stats for free. Otherwise, you have to pay for it. The wiki also tells you every code that works in the game, which is pretty useful, regardless of which third stat you choose, if you even do that. There are plenty of different choices of fruits, swords, and guns you can pick from to match your playstyle. There are even several fighting styles, which just so happen to fall into the lovely melee stat that gives you more energy. Options are cool, however, we do have to grind whatever we are using in order for them to be actually useful. Introducing Mastery! Mastery levels go up as you kill NPCs with whatever you are using, that means every fruit fighting style, sword, and gun have mastery. So every time you want to get something new, you have to essentially level it up to use it to its full potential. Leveling it up not only gives you new moves, but it also causes it to do more damage. The quest giver gives you a bunch of XP and money for doing its repeatable quests, and this compass will guide you to whatever quest giver you were supposed to be doing right now. It turns red when it's time to move to the next quest giver if you somehow don't read that message. The XP you receive from quest givers do not go into mastery. Got all of that? Cool. Moving on. Now, if any of you have played any Roblox simulator or RPG, you would know that they tend to start you off nice and easy to give you that wonderful feeling you get from leveling up. Killing easy bandits, getting more powerful, you can fantasize about how strong you will become. What type of legendary enemies will you start to face after you kill these bandits? 
I'll never understand why games do this. Cool, great, we're fighting monkeys. This is probably where you want to start making sure you talk to every NPC you come across, as this guy right here is pretty important, but you can't actually use him yet. The game is teasing you, and you have no idea how important this guy will be to you if you don't plan on spending money on this game. The Blocks Fruits Gotcha System. Step right up, my blocky friends, and test your luck, for you too can acquire a powerful fruit from the Blocks Fruits Gotcha. Anyway, to sum up what's important and what's not, if you were investing your points in fruit, then any fruit will help you, obviously. So go ahead and eat whatever it gives you on the first roll. If you were not investing points in fruit, then only elemental fruits in Buddha will help you. I wouldn't bother eating anything else as they will only give you useless abilities that tickle enemies and grant you the magical inability to touch the ocean, as it becomes acid and drains your health rapidly, unless you're a fish. You can store one of each fruit, and it's worth doing so. Why is elemental useful, you may be wondering? That's why. Yeah, basically, once you get to a certain level relative to the enemy you were fighting, I'm not specifying what level that is exactly, as it does change as you progress, they can't hurt you. The only exceptions, most of which you will counter in later seas, are if the enemies use hockey or happen to use an elemental attack. Oh yeah, and bosses. Don't think you can grind bosses that easily. By the way, this also includes you if you get involved in PvP. You can't hurt a player if you're just punching, slicing, shooting, whatever. You can fix this by going to an island you're technically not supposed to go to yet, and walk into this cave where some old man who totally does not have any relation to any character in One Piece and pick up enhancement from him for 25k. You can get it at any time. Time. You just have to find the ice island or wait until the compass guides you there. By the way, you do have to train enhancement as it does give you more damage and defense as you level it, and you can't just use your fruit to level it. The game doesn't really tell you how that's going, and I'm gonna warn you, if you decide to get an elemental fruit, you will level up a lot faster, since a good chunk of enemies will straight up not be able to hurt you. I'm only warning you this, because that also happens to mean that grinding will be a lot simpler, and hence a lot more boring and tedious to do. No longer will you care about what type of new attacks your enemy has for the most part. No longer is it necessary to use your ability, as your click damage will far surpass the DPS your abilities do if that option is available to you. I say option because not all fruits have the ability to just click and do damage, which is important for fruit mains as you're gonna really want to trust me when I say that just clicking can get you far more levels far more quickly than using an elemental. Some, like ice and light, for example, do have that option and make them top tier fruits for grinding early on because of it. I'm not trying to make this video be a tutorial, it'll just make things a lot simpler when I talk about the game later on. So. With all that being said, there isn't really anything else to the game in the first C, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. There are some weapon dealers for you sword and gun mains, there are bosses, most of which will drop a weapon or accessory, and that ability teacher does have a couple new abilities you don't have to train when you get the cash, and there are fighting style teachers you can use to replace your normal combat with as they are significantly better. Outside of that, there isn't really anything to do besides leveling up to 200, which is the minimum requirement for a puzzle that you can do. That's a lot of levels. But if you know what you're doing, you can get through them pretty quickly if you don't have other players grinding the same enemies as you. Anyway, this puzzle was actually very important, so I'm going to go over it quickly. Now, keep in mind that the word puzzle can mean anything from an actual puzzle you have to figure out in order to achieve something, or it can mean you have to go around and search aimlessly for a thing with little to no indication of where said thing is. Thankfully, the wiki has your back, and other players who have gone through the trouble were kind enough to tell you what to do if you ever get lost. I respect anyone who has contributed to the wiki, as it certainly has made my life easier on the game. I think they deserve more gratitude than they might get. If you grind it at the jungle, you might have seen a button or two that you touch and it just lights green. Maybe your curiosity led you to find more, maybe it didn't. Either way, it's pretty important now, as there were five buttons. Press all five buttons and it opens up a secret room under the quest guy. There, you get a torch with a riddle that leads you to the desert island that gives you a cup. And another riddle that leads you to the snow island, where you fill up the cup with little droplets of water. Then give it to this homeless man. Homeless man says to find his son, who you may have been mad at for being rude to you earlier. Hello, rich man. This rich man who was rude suddenly wants help from a bandit that stole from him. Ah, oh, how awful. So of course you reluctantly help him. Kill this random bandit, take his money, because why not? And give back the invisible treasure that you apparently took from his corpse. Then he gives you a key that you plug into this wall and boom, you for some reason fight 
Jenks, who is a pirate emperor. Hmm. All right, Emperor of the Sea, I present to you your weakness, this wall. Easy. Anyway, you get a sword that upgrades to a very good PvP weapon, and that's it. You keep leveling, hate your life, then when the compass finally directs you to the Upper Sky Islands, or when you get to level 300, if you're impatient for a new ability, you can get Observation. For the strongest person to ever exist, Usopp, $750,000. That's a currency. Whatever the currency is. I don't care. Observation. The ability to see enemies and players from a distance that gives you a couple of free dodges you can use, which work for basically everything but AoE abilities. Also, normal enemies only use half of your dodge, so you can technically dodge four times if you fight them. Like Enhancement, you can train this and have up to eight dodges, or more depending on a couple of factors, but eight minimum. Talking to this guy again gives you your XP count, and the max is 5,000 XP. Yes, you have to dodge. 5,000 attacks to max your observation. And yes, maxing it does have a purpose, despite your character achieving 8 dodges with about half that amount. At this point of the game, you start to realize more and more that your elemental is behaving a little strangely. Honestly, if it took you this long to realize that you might want to pay attention more, but that's besides the point. You started off being this impenetrable force to enemies, but now you have to be 8 levels higher than the first group in the Upper Sky Islands in order to not take damage. It's not that bad, but what if I told you that it keeps increasing and will eventually require you to be 100 levels higher than the enemy by the last quest as of right now? As you progress and begin to leave the first sea, you notice that some enemies do actually use enhancement now. Remember when I said that only elemental and buddha fruits are going to be useful if you decide not to invest points in it? Also remember when I said that ice and light are top tier grinding fruits at the beginning? Yeah. This is where it all starts to change as we enter the second sea. In order to reach the second sea, we have to talk to this detective where the game randomly decides to try and give you a story. I don't know why it did this. I've only seen it happen twice, and the only other time was when I traveled to the third sea. So, okay, I guess. Anyway, talk to that guy. Hurt, in quotations, the ice admiral, or uh, basically kill him and then his dead body starts talking to you as if you didn't kill him, okay. Then you go back to the detective, then you go to this captain who brings you to the second sea. Woo! Suddenly you can trade fruits, and suddenly one fruit in particular becomes very high in demand. Introducing the Buddha fruit. Have you ever seen a gigantic player? Yeah, that's Buddha. It makes you giant and capable of destroying NPCs without them even touching you, because you're giant. What's more, if you combine it with one of the two new races you can acquire in the sea, ghoul, you are capable of wiping out pretty much any NPC and boss in the second sea without trying at all, as you will regen health far faster than the damage you receive. It is the grind fruit, and it makes your life so easy that you feel like you're cheating. If that wasn't enough, you just punching NPCs can be directed right back towards players. You were capable of wiping out players twice your level if they don't know how to counter a giant Buddha player. It's scary, it's gross, and it's why Buddha is the most demanding fruit of the second sea. If you do use Buddha, I'll go ahead and show you the struggles we go through because of you and the game while I'm playing. The reason for this is not to make you get rid of your fruit, it's to make you chill the hell out! Wow! I get it. The game presents you with power and you can't help but have a little god complex and go on a rampage. That doesn't mean you have to be a bad person. You don't have to steal kills. You don't have to kill any person who happens to be your level and wants to kill the NPCs for a quest just because you're in the same spot. You don't need to lose all of your morals just because you can kill most people without effort. It's not necessary unless they attack you or take your kills. I don't care if you want to use Buddha, but you really don't need to give the game more of a reason to have this toxic community. I haven't mentioned it much, but players love to kill you in this game and it only becomes worse as you get to the second C. It then turns into complete hell in third C for reasons I'll talk about later. I've been nuked in first C by max levels for no reason and killed by the same people plus many Buddhas in the second C. However, the majority of my deaths were because of Buddha players trying to interrupt me grinding because they feel like it or want to take my spot. I decided to go into sword as my third stat, 
and I wasn't about to change my stats just to deal with Buddhas that decide to have temper tantrums for going near them. So because of that, I don't really stand much of a chance against Buddhas until later on in the game where I get better options to deal with them. Even then, I don't want to deal with them because they are better at grinding and therefore will take the majority of the kills in your spot regardless if you killed them or they killed you. They tend to have zero respect for you even if you were there first, and I've only seen one that actually shared a grinding spot with me and that wasn't until the third C. If you're not counting the two of my friends who decided to use Buddha for grinding as well. I don't hate the fruit, I hate the people who give other players a hard time with the fruit, that's all. I don't care for your reasoning, you don't need to be toxic unless someone is being toxic first. People like them exist in every game, and that's why it's partially this game's fault for giving players such an easy fruit to grind and kill players with. It may not be the best, and you may be able to counter it, but that doesn't mean it's perfectly fine to have in the game. Regardless, it's a problem I have to deal with in order to grind. Because of how incredibly toxic players get once you arrive in second C, it caused my friends and I to use the next best thing that's not a private server. Roblox has this system where it fills up every server one at a time and then moves on to the next, uh, but this can change depending on what the developers choose. For this game at least, if you change the order of the servers to show all of the empty ones and scroll down a bit, thank you Roblox, you can get into a server that stays empty for a little while. It can vary from a few minutes to hours. You just have to make sure you're not picking the first server you see, since Roblox tends to choose those servers too. It's a good chance that the one player in the server that was basically empty just so happens to be a hacker. Now, this game says it has an auto detection system that will ban you, but uh, I'm not entirely sure what it checks for as there are hackers everywhere and it, it's blatantly obvious that they are hackers. They have full scripts that just do everything for them. It's actually impressive. I've seen them detect bosses and actually fly towards them and obliterate them by hovering over anything it attacks. I've seen some just go wild and kill whatever is closest. I've seen one fly towards me and spam every ability it has against me in order to automatically gain bounty. They're everywhere and can sometimes require you to server hop as they're pretty efficient at what they do. Regardless, the grind must go on. Achieving 850 will allow you to evolve your race. There are a few things you must do in order to evolve. The Colosseum questline and the Alchemist quest. The Colosseum quest is pretty simple. Talk to this guy, guy tells you to kill a bunch of these pirates, then tells you to kill this boss, then simply tells you to go free the people in the Colosseum. Where are the people in the Colosseum? Here are the people in the Colosseum. Upon arriving, you will see a bunch of symbols. This is why exploring is important, as you were supposed to receive the code to free the prisoners in the mansion. Doing all of that gives you a helmet, that's pretty decent, and it unlocks the alchemist quest. This quest is a lot more annoying to do as you have to obtain three flowers. Sounds easy, it's not, it sucks. One spawns in daytime, one spawns in nighttime, and one is pure mind-numbing RNG as you have to hope one spawns from an enemy. The location of the first two flowers are thankfully documented in the wiki, and it goes in full detail of the mechanics of it all. By the way, dying will make you drop all of the flowers, and remember that this is a toxic game. Players love to kill you for no reason. So if you manage to do all of that and have the money on you, you can get your race feed too. The buffs are all dependent on your race. After that, you don't really have to do anything until level 1000. However, I should start talking about the game's next ploy to make you spend more time on it, as it has taken roughly 20 hours of my time so far. Fragments. Fragments unlock so many important things in this game. It allows you to upgrade some fruits to be way more powerful. It allows you to buy some colored enhancement if you have it fully upgraded. It allows you to buy what's known as V2 fighting styles, which are essentially all the same fighting styles but with better moves and higher damage. Since they are the same fighting style, you of course need to use the worst version for a little while until it has 400 mastery. Either or, you will need a lot of these fragments, and one of the best ways to get them are from fruit raids. They're pretty challenging early on, unless you're a Buddha, and of coincidentally allow you to upgrade your fruit at the same time. They're not even that expensive. You can even exchange any fruit that might be useless to you for a raid chip, which is why I told you in the first C to store whatever fruits you don't have. However, you must be level 1100 in order to host them yourself, so you'll need a friend or someone nice enough to buy and carry you through a raid until you get there. They start off as challenging and fun ways to take quick breaks from grinding while still making progress through the game, but they'll quickly get boring and tedious as you go on. Anyway, don't mind as I randomly change fighting styles every once in a while, I'm just trying to level them up so I can eventually get God Human, which is the most expensive fighting style in the game. To give you a quick idea, remember how I said you need 400 mastery to get the upgraded fighting style? Yeah, you need to get every single fighting style to 400 in order to use God Human. 
If I don't do this, I'll get way too bored of the game as the grinding is so long and uninteresting in every way. Once you do get to level 1000, you can get V3 already, but you need a fruit that's worth 1 million to give to this guy. He's kind enough to take and hold on to whatever fruits you give him regardless of its worth forever. Do that and you can fight Swan, who is apparently the hardest boss in the sea. So this might be a tough fight, but I believe I can... Yep, all me. Can't say otherwise, I did all the work. <laughs> yeah, so uh, after that, you just have to find the secret place and this guy will give you a task depending on your race. I got an easy one, as you can see. Afterwards, pay two million and you get V3. All V3 does is give you an ability. This one gives me more speed, yay. That's pretty much all there is to second C. So you just have to grind to until 1500, unless you want to get the other fighting styles before you leave or get these legendary swords that are very annoying to get depending how your luck is. I won't bother getting into him, he's gross. There are other things to do, they are just small things that you get to experience if you ever play this game yourself, which you most likely already have, but whatever. The majority of it is still grinding at the end of the day. We once again have a bit of a story by talking to this guy. Fight another boss of some unrecognizable One Piece character, no idea who this is supposed to be in my One Piece game to be honest, but then we get to watch a cutscene that actually looks pretty good. The quest giver, who is now a corpse, tells you to go after him, and onwards to the third C we go. Third C is pretty horrible. I've had my bad experiences in second C, but this is definitely a new experience. Everyone here wants blood. Your blood. Your PvP turns off for 15 minutes when we die. You can't turn it off otherwise. If you don't have that timer, you will be targeted by some max level. It's inevitable. They want your bounty. All they see is red. You are the next meal. This will be my experience playing in 3rd C, unless I happen to get into a small server. Honestly, it's not that bad once you let go of the frustration of dying. At the end of the day, they just kill you and usually leave you alone after. They aren't taking your kills, they just want your bounty. So if you can tolerate them doing that, then you won't have too much of a problem with this C. Unless you notice another Buddha grinding. Speaking of that, the server really makes you feel like garbage for not grinding with Buddha. It has really high level requirements to be immune to attacks for elemental fruits in this C, and there are even a lot of enemies that have random abilities that still do damage. Some islands have nightmarish enemies, one island has ice skating jungle warriors, and eventually you will reach an island that gives you observation V2. If you're anything like me and are cautious about where all players are so you don't get snuck up on, then you probably use observation a lot. Observation V2 makes it more useful since you get clearer vision along with the ability to see everything that a player is using along with their level finally. You couldn't tell what level someone was before this, you had to guess. This was also how I confirmed that max levels are the ones that go around the island slaughtering every player in sight. It's a very cool thing to achieve and I didn't record it. <laughs> Damn it. The one time I forget to record and it's something useful. I recorded so many hours just me just punching enemies and I didn't record observation. I'm so mad at myself. It's it's not like it's particularly hard to get. You just have to do a quest line from a citizen called the Citizen Quest. Very unique name. Thank you, Wiki. The citizen has you kill some pirates and a boss just like the guy in the second sea, except this time you have to randomly find a musketeer hat I would not know about if I didn't look at the wiki for information. This hat is useful for the next quest from the Hungry Man. The Hungry Man wants you to find fruit. Sounding very similar to the alchemist quest now I see, however, this one was way easier as all of the fruits only have one spawn point and respawn every 10 minutes, and all three fruits are on different islands, so I guess it can take a bit of time to get them since the third sea has a ton of ocean between islands, the hungry man is picky, and wants it all in a bowl. Not sure why the homeless man doesn't just take all the fruits I traveled across the world for, but whatever. What's more, the citizen gives you a bowl, only if you got the musketeer hat. Don't question it. Anyway, do all of that, give him a small fee of $5 million to pay for his groceries for the next month, and you have better eyes. Anything else you do in the sea just gives you better weapons, for the most part. I'm not even getting close to all of them, and at this point I was ready to get the 600 levels I had remaining out of the way, so I did that. It should be worth noting that these guys here are the last enemies you can grind if you don't want them to hurt you, so have fun with that if you're like me and use elemental still. So, once you hit max level, you get to finally do all of the fun stuff. Collect weapons, enhancement colors, get more fragments, do more puzzles, learn how to PvP properly, which honestly looks like a topic of its own. With how crazy opinions are with it. So what do you think? Is it worth it? 
I basically told you all of the major content you will experience while grinding, but remember that the majority of it will still just be that. Grinding. Clicking. Killing the same enemies and dealing with toxic players who feel like killing you for no reason. That's the experience of Bloss Fruits, and that's what I went through for the past week. Although my suffering was great, I'm relieved that I can finally do fun things in the game and maybe enjoy myself in it. Thanks for watching. If you want more content from me and also want to support me, then feel free to click the join button on my channel. Big thanks to CV, Wesley the Talkie, some random idiot, Delta 14, Rat Plays, whoever that person was, the Carl, Asad Nabiev, my username is this, and Cone But Gaming for supporting me. It's really cool to see so many people support me, and I hope I can keep improving for all of you. But for now, I leave. Goodbye. Well guys, it's worth it. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Best game ever. 10 out of 10.